Stoney, I'll take it from here. And, you know, it's almost impossible to talk about any major aspect of the past year without addressing the elephant that is still in this room, the COVID-19 pandemic. Over the past year, we have developed more weapons to fight the virus. China's Sinopharm published the world's first phase three clinical trial results of two inactivated vaccines, showing an efficacy rate of up to 78%. And pharmaceutical giants Merck and Pfizer announced earlier this year their breakthrough on COVID antiviral drugs. And China also completed phase two clinical trial of its self-developed antiviral with up to 84% efficacy and preventing hospitalization and 100% in preventing death. It has already received emergency use authorization from 15 countries and regions. But there is always a gap that science cannot fill. The United Nations have warned since 2020 about severe inequity in vaccine distribution, and we have still failed to overcome this issue in 2021. While high and middle income countries have exceeded the 40% vaccination goal this year, many low income countries have only achieved 7% levels. Low vaccination rates in these countries is the leading cause behind the virus's continued spread and mutation. Just when we thought the Delta variants would define the pandemic in 2021, a few weeks ago, South African scientists shook the world with their discovery of yet another Omicron, which is now responsible for more than 73% of new cases in the U.S. There is still a long battle against the pandemic ahead of us. And 2021 has also been a big year for space exploration, especially for the red planet. In February, three robots arrived on Mars. NASA's Perseverance rover aims to find signs of life on Mars. It's collecting samples in the Jezero Creator and will return them to Earth in the following missions. The UAE's Hope Orbiter is set to form a complete picture of the Martian atmosphere. And China's Tiananmen-1 is a three-in-one mission. Its orbiter and rover will thoroughly check the entire planet from orbit, surface, and subsurface. And here's what the chief designer of China's Mars mission had to say about the past year and his vision for 2022. In 2021, our Mars mission started orbiting the red planet in February. It landed on the Martian surveys on May 22nd. And since then, we've been trying to cover the whole planet. This is a year that I could only describe as fruitful and enriching. We accomplished all of these things through teamwork, and we are proud. Yet we are always looking ahead, and we strive in the next year too. Deep space exploration is for uncovering scientific mysteries. We have always adhered to the concept of openness and cooperation with international parties. It is the same principle of the Chinese government as well as the China National Space Administration. Exploration has no end, just as cooperation is endless. We hope to continue to work with other institutions in the future and at all levels. Well, now back to Earth. The COP26 meeting in Scotland has reminded us of the challenges of global warming and the major driver behind it, carbon emissions. In China, a thrilling technology was announced to synthesize starch from carbon dioxide. The new method is believed to be eight and a half times more efficient than starch produced by conventional agriculture and what it costs is just some greenhouse gas. Another breakthrough, two of the most powerful quantum computers in the world to date now, both come from China. Zhu Chongzhi, a superconducting quantum computer with a 56 cubic processor and optical quantum computer Zhuzhang 2.0 have both display what has been called quantum primacy over a classical computer. And looking to the sky, there is the China Space Station, which has fully entered the stage of regular operation as a near completion. And my colleague Liu Jiaxin witnessed the birth of the CSS, and let's see what she has to share with us. If you go to any of the space-related institutions in China, you will find out the architecture looks very much the same. The sites are spacious and have an understated style, but are solid, just like what China has achieved over the past year. In 2021, Chinese astronauts started their journey at the space station. The Tianhe the space station's most critical module launched into space on April the 29th, followed by two cargo and manned missions. 
The astronauts traveled to the space station in batches to complete verification of key technology and construction tasks. In September, Shenzhou 12 astronauts ended their three-month stay in space and safely returned to Earth, while the crew of Shenzhou 13 took over and continued to work in space. The most notable event during Shenzhou 13 mission was the 60-minute science lecture from space. The whole event was televised live to a global audience, and the ground technicians who sit here at the flight control center ensured that the whole program ran smoothly. I had the privilege of witnessing two manned missions this year, and it's hard to forget the excitement at the scene. What impressed me most about these scenes was that each mission ended with the joy of success. That is much to be celebrated. In 2022, we will launch the experimental module Wentian and Mengtian to complete the construction of China's space station. For our astronaut system, we also need to send Shenzhou 14 and Shenzhou 15 crew to complete several months of flight missions. If you haven't noticed, you can actually see the space station flying overhead shh, at night. So in 2022, I'll still be here with you, bringing you with the latest news in China's space program. Liu Zhaxing, CGTN, Beijing. Well, a tremendous year indeed for the China space industry and for other parts of the world. It is also a year to saw space tourism take off. In July, billionaire Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos lifted off. And spacecraft created by their own companies, both successfully reaching the edge of outer space. In September, SpaceX Inspiration4 crew flew to an altitude of 585 kilometers, making it the first orbital civilian flight ever. Reusable rockets drove down the cost of the fight, fl- of those flights, but that didn't ease criticism, with some people calling those space joy rides a vulgar display of wealth and power. In 2022, CGT would have more coverage on China's space station. Among the planned missions are two launches to hook the Tianhe core module with the two space laboratories, Mengtian and Wentian, and there will also be two cargo missions and two crewed missions. And that's not the end of the story. After this completion, the Tiangong space station will welcome a companion craft that share its orbit, China's Shintian Space Telescope. As launch date is set for some time in 2024. Earlier, I talked to Shuntian project scientist Zhang Hu for the latest on the telescope building process. Shuntian、uh, is a two-meter、uh, serviceable telescope.、Uh, it's going to carry out a, a very large、uh, area, high-resolution、uh, imaging and satellite spectroscopy survey.、Um, it will cover、uh, cosmology,、uh, galactic studies. Uh, stellar science and extrasolar、uh, planet studies.、Uh, currently,、uh, we are building、uh, several models、uh, for different tests and performance verification.、Um, the electronic model has already been assembled and is being、uh, tested.、Uh, the thermal mechanical model、uh, is almost completed.、Uh, final product will be a qualification model.、Uh, it will be ready、uh, for thorough tests、uh, by the end of next year. Um, the performance、uh, will be verified on that model.、Um, then after that,、uh, we'll build a flight model.、Uh, we uh, expect uh, the launch uh, to be uh, around 2024. Uh, currently,、uh, the primary mirror and the second mirror、uh, of the telescope are almost completed, and it will be coated in January. Well, but long before China's Shintian is ready for operation, we witnessed the launch of another mighty telescope just last week: the James Webb Space Telescope, the most powerful and sophisticated telescope ever built. It's equipped with a mirror over six times larger than on the Hubble Space Telescope, and it uses infrared instead of the optical and UV wavelengths to observe the universe. It also operates much further from Earth than Hubble and most other telescopes do. All of that allows James Webb to see much farther back in time to learn more about the origin of the cosmos. And humankind's search for the next frontier isn't just limited to the universe. And there's the new dimension now, known as the metaverse. Arguably the hottest tech buzzword over the last few months, the metaverse is an interactive virtual pl- space 
uh, where many aspects of our future everyday life, including entertainment and work, may one day take place. CGTN's Giles Gibson from Brussels have the story. A fire breaks out on a subway platform, smoke filling the air. But don't worry, it's not real. That virtual fire was started by Belgian company One Bonsai, which designs virtual reality training services used by the police, the military and private companies. The concept of metaverse is the concept of having a, a parallel digital universe with the universe that we live in, so from like real world. And here at One Bonsai, we, ha we have actually a virtual reality training metaverse, meaning that anybody like you could just uh, jump into a training, somebody else from anywhere else in the world could actually join your training. With cutting edge VR hardware, the company can place you in a specially designed scenario where you learn by doing. So instead of doing my fire safety training in this boring office, I can put on this virtual reality headset. I then pick up this specially adapted fire extinguisher. And then now I am learning to put out this fire. After rebranding its parent company as Meta, Facebook announced plans to create 3D spaces for business meetings, games, or just hanging out with friends. However, as the tech giant battles yet another scandal, there are concerns that its plans for the Metaverse could give Facebook even more control over how we use the Internet. A former Facebook employee who leaked thousands of internal documents to US media and regulators addressed the European Parliament earlier this month. My name is Frances Haugen. I used to work at Facebook and joined the company because I believe Facebook has the potential to bring out the best in us. But I am here today because I believe that Facebook's products harm children, stoke division, weaken our democracy, and much more. In reporting dubbed the Facebook files, the Wall Street Journal accused the company of knowing its platforms are quotes riddled with flaws that cause harm and doing nothing about it. The company says the newspaper chose selectively quotes from internal company documents to present a narrative that's simply wrong. So this is actually a, a, stock, um, a stock headset made by uh, Facebook the, and like the daughter company of Facebook, Oculus. Back at One Bonsai, the team works with a variety of kits, including Facebook-owned Oculus headsets, a big player in the VR market. But whichever company ends up dominating this new frontier of the internet, in some ways, the metaverse has already arrived. Giles Gibson, CGTN, Brussels. Well, where will the metaverse take us to in the future? To discuss, with us, to discuss this, I'm joined by Nina Xiang. She is the founder of Future Logic, a media and data platform focusing on global innovation economy. Nina, welcome to the show. Um, many of the technologies now used to build the metaverse have long existed, but it's only this year that a metaverse seems to have become a new continent where giants compete. Which elements do you think in terms of tech or social have contributed to the explosion of this concept this year? Right, it's hard to pinpoint a specific um, uh, reason why the metaverse frenzy has gotten so uh, hot this year, but it could be partly due to the success of metaverse uh, concept companies like Roblox, or it could be partly due to the fact that people have been stuck at home for two years. Or it could be that metaverse, the word, sounds dystopia yet cool. So uh, no matter the reason, it's quite uh, uh, no question that metaverse is going to be the hottest next new thing and that's going to dominate our conversation for a long while. We're going to see every tech company jumping on the metaverse bandwagon. We're going to see many new companies being founded, big deals and high valuations. Um, and uh, we're going to be talking about this for years to come. Well, if a space exploration, we've talked a lot about, about the space exploration today, and if, if those exploration represents humans exploring the boundary of the physical world, the metaverse will be the space where humans explore the virtual world. And Chinese science fiction author Lu Cixin once expressed his concern about people who get used to the virtual world might lose interest in the exploration of the real world. 
Are we going to have to choose between them? I don't think so. I don't think um, you know these two are mutually exclusive. Uh, people can absolutely pursue space exploration and the, the virtual universe at the same time. But however, I do think that because of the immersive and invasive nature of metaverse, it's going to present or create potentially a much greater ethical, cultural, and uh, value problems with it. And you know, we're still dealing with the impact of social media platforms like Facebook or um, short video firms like uh, TikTok. And we're still dealing with this information and potentially harmful impact on people's psychology. So when we, before we go to the metaverse, we, we need to be smarter this time. We need to make sure that the products uh, in the metaverse are going to be designed, not with profit as a priority, but also uh, you know, paying uh, enough attention uh, to people's health. And we're also going to make sure that we're not going to wait until problems become so great and try to address them after the fact. So um, those are really important issues if we're going to make the metaverse work for, for us, for humans. Well, thank you, Nina, for sharing with us today. Um, from vaccines and quantum computing to space exploration, 2021 has had plenty of goodies for science and innovation. And next year, we'll be sure to have even more surprises to look forward to. I'm Yan Zhao, and this has been a 2021 Roundup. And now we back to you, Donate. Thank you.